So Ecamm have just released version 4.1 and allow me to walk you through it and let you see what this update is all about. Really, you could summarize this in one word, overlays. But there are some powerful updates and features in here that I don't want you to miss. So don't be thinking it's only 0.1, it's not version 5. Yeah, you're going to want to see this. And I don't just want to rattle down a list of features. This is added, this is added. I want to come at this in a very practical way and let you see me using these overlays and building them in because I think it will mean more to you and hopefully you can then apply it to yourself and go, that's where I could use this. Now, if you haven't already done this update, let's do that first. And the first thing I want to point out to you is right at the top, we're going to go to the, the top of the screen here and notice that on mine it says Finder. That's because the last thing I clicked was the desktop and so I've now lost Ecamm as being along that top. This might sound obvious to some of you, but to others you'll go, it really frustrates me. You'd say it's at the top and I can't see it. Well, you need to just click in the main Ecamm window here and notice it changes the navigation at the top to Ecamm Live. Then we're going to click Ecamm Live, check for updates, and it's telling me I'm up to date with 4.1. If you're not, it'll just update for you. So we're all on 4.1. As I say, I'm going to demo this to you, showing you uh, how I've used it. Now, if you don't know, I run Ecamm Live Academy and we run these ELA Live events twice a year. We're in the middle of one right now. And um, this is the branding that we've been using over there. So if I just take off these controls, you can see uh, we've done this nice job of branding, I think. And everything that I've done here is using these new layers and these new updates. So I think it's a good way for us to come at it. We change it around in here. I bring my comments on, although it's not seen at the minute. That's because, let's just bring it in. There we go. Screen share. So uh, you get the idea. I just want to walk through and show you how we've done that. So we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to close down these and I've put a little folder here, 4.1, just so I know where I'm working. And we're going to start off with a new scene. Now, by default, the source is choosing camera. Uh, normally, when I start a new scene, camera is the most likely one that I want. You can change this in your preferences, but we're going to go with blank. And all blank does is, as you can see there, give me a black screen. There's nothing there. And if I wanted to put a colored background in there previously, I'd have gone off to Canva and made one, or I'd have brought a text box in and hidden the text. Well, we've now got, and this is our first new overlay, is this shape overlay. And look what happens. I can bring this in here. I can push this up to the top corner. And here I have my object overlay. And when I click the pencil, you're going to see a brand new menu coming at the side. So we're walking through what I've done here. We've got this rectangle. I'll just bring it a bit smaller a minute so you can appreciate that it is a separate overlay. I can choose the colors, shapes of this one. I'm sticking in this case with this rectangle and I can fill it with color. And I choose down here what color I want this image to be. I can put a border around it. If there was a reason why I wanted to use this box this way, I can put a radius on those edges. These bits you're familiar with seeing around the text boxes previously, but this is just a box on its own. Now, I don't want a border on this and I don't want a radius on the edges. This is just going to give me a solid color background. I'm going to start there first of all, push it up there so that's filled the background. And this is at the minute going to give me this as my bottom layer in this scene. But I want to drag this into show in all backgrounds because notice what's going to happen now. If I were to create another scene and I change the source to be blank, now we've put this in the background. So every new scene that uses blank as the source, we've put it down here at the bottom of your overlays, show in background. You can see now that uh, we can put it in there. So this one we've now got with this color in the background. I want to just bring in my camera. This is where I would go next. So you can see already that this is, I can just center this up. Um, I'm now bringing in a camera overlay and notice that we've got this solid blue in the background now. If we want to go back to that background, which is down here in showing background, we 
can click it up. Well, we can't actually know it's in the background. We need to do it down here. Click on that little setting. And instead of it being color, I want to show you gradient. This one's already set up from uh, me demonstrating this before. But notice that now we've got this gradient on here. I can just push myself off there for a minute. You're seeing this background changing. I'm not suggesting I would use this color, although you may well like it. For me, what I wanted to do is I know that that's my primary color, that blue. I wanted to have that one in. And maybe the second one, I'm going to choose the same blue again. But on this slider here, I can go from light to dark with that color. So if I pull that dark, what it's going to do is give me a nice gradient from the blue that I want at the top to the dark one at the bottom. And I can just see how I can scroll this around so I can set it so it's dark on the left to light on the right or top to bottom diagonally. I just want to keep it down here for now. So I've got my light blue at the top going to a dark one at the bottom. So that's a really nice feature that uh, uh, straight away it works on a text box and I can do this fill in other ways as well. So for example, I've got this uh, camera overlay over here. Look what happens over here. I can do the same thing with my border and I can choose a gradient. And so it's not just in the solid colors that I get this new gradient feature. I can now do the same thing over here. So if I wanted to uh, do the same thing and go with this blue and maybe on this one I want to have it dark at the top and come in the other way. Yep. So there are different ways of applying this, but um, very cool that we can now not only have a solid color on the borders or on this image in the background, we could add that to a scrolling ticker and create a, you know, a reflective, almost a metallic look to it. Uh, any overlay now will let us apply a frame, a border to it, and any border will let us do this gradient. Now. Let me show you on this object, so the blue background here, we've also got motion. So it's going to carry, I set it up in the gradient there, or I can change it here, but it's carried across what I've put in the gradient, but notice that it's just moving around a bit in here now. And you might just find that by, if I were to pull that back over, you like the idea of there just being a bit of a subtle movement going on behind there. If you wanted to see that a bit more clearly I could change one of these colors um, and you can actually see that that is chasing around there in the background again if you felt you didn't want it there you want to go back to your gradient like this but you decided you wanted to have it in your border you can go with motion over here and again notice how that's chasing around there all right so New updates, ways to be able to play with this. Now let me show you, we're, we're, we're still really on these shape overlays first. And another use for this, if I go back over here and we'll just go to camera this time, I'm going to bring in another of these shape overlays. It's going to fill the screen because that was the size of the last one I used. I can completely change around the shape of this. But instead of this being a color or a gradient or a motion, I can use blur on here. So notice when I put that in front of my face, it blurs me. Uh, why might you want to use this? Maybe you've got a family photo up there that you don't really want sharing. Maybe you're sharing a screen where you, you can't avoid seeing your emails or something and you want to be able to blank that out. I, I guess something like that. We can hit the pencil symbol. We can actually adjust how strong that blur is on there. We can also do this uh, kind of zoom effect on it, or we can do uh, pixelate and again, adjust what that's like. So yeah, the kind of thing you would put in front of somebody's face if you were trying to avoid showing who it was. I don't know. They're there as options. The main one for me is being able to use it as that background so that I don't have to be stuck with a, a black image in the background. I don't have to go off and make it somewhere else. There's a lot of flexibility there for me to be able to bring some color, as a gradient or even that motion and really use it as that background image. Now, another use where we've used that um, image and in the past we'd had to bring a text one in and take the text out transparent would be, let's bring one on here. Oh, <laughs> it'll always remember your last one and go with that. Let's come back to our blue and I'm gonna 
put this in the front. So I am staying in the background this time because what I want to do is, yes, we've got our color on there, but I can take down this opacity to something like this. This might be what we would do as, well, it is what we do as part of our intros. I wanna have a countdown timer. And the other thing I would do is with my camera in the background in this case, I want to blur it and make it look like there's a bit of distance. So I can hit blur effect down here and I can slide that across. So it's blurring me in the background to almost look like the camera's focused closer in. And so if I were to put some text on the front of this saying, starting in, now it's picked up a background. I'm gonna suggest rather than clicking edit background here, I would click it and introduce it and then edit it here. And so I don't want a background, I'm taking that off. But this would be the sort of thing I would use on an introduction. I would, you know, maybe bring my logo in, then be saying that we're starting in. But uh, yeah, another use where we would use this um, object overlay. All right, uh, maybe you wanna do bullet points and, you know, more than just the, the background to that text, you wanna be able to play with this. Maybe you think, um, it would be a nice idea to be able to have it as a, you know, if you're going to bring bullet points in at the side of you, uh, you know, you could do something like that. So lots of reasons, and uh, let's take the blur off of me, uh, lots of reasons why this might work really nicely. Again, I really want to get across that with all of these overlays, we now get this consistent menu. So whether we're bringing in text, objects, images, countdowns, whatever it be, this same menu is consistent across the board. So things like transitions that we can have this flying in from the left, it'll do the same on this as it would with the text. Okay, so that's the objects. That's the first one of these really that I wanted to cover. And if I just come back then, uh, we've had a little play with this then. So we have brought in our camera. This was how I was building up my scenes. I tend to stick to the blue uh, guide on there, I find that really useful. And I could, you know, just do this and it adds something nice. It adds another level to it, doesn't it? Rather than just seeing me on my own. Um, let's take these off. It's just a, a nice little step up from that straight away with some very simple branding. The other thing I can do with this camera overlay, uh, again, everything I'm showing you applies to all of the different overlays. We can put a shadow on this. So notice at that bottom right corner, it's now just applied a shadow to it. I can adjust the color and the opacity of that shadow, the blur strength, the angle, the distance, uh, you get the idea. I'm gonna pull that just in a bit because the other thing we did, and if you clock that earlier on, we put our logo down the side. And that brings me on to the text overlays. So I'm gonna say ELA Live. I'm bringing it in here. So this is how I tend to use it. I'm bringing it in here initially. I do need to go back because I wanted to change the color of just this word live. So I want ELA to be white and I want that to be in orange. So I'm gonna hit save on there. What I can now do with this text, well, let's let's build it up. I, I, so many things, on my, my mind's going as to what I can show you with this. Uh, what I want to do is to be able to change that so it sits down the side there. So I've just changed the rotation to be 90 degrees and now I can bring this over and still snap it into place if I want it bang in the center or because my camera's slightly off, I'm gonna set it up there. Then I'm gonna bring this back over so that I've got a similar spacing between those. Notice that it's actually, it's touching up to that image. So I've got a little blue marker on there. If I want to, I can also apply the shadow to this. I can adjust the shadow. Maybe I think it's a little bit strong on the text, so I want to just back it off a bit. All right, it's looking good, isn't it? While we're on text, if I click Edit Text, this might not be a big deal to all of you, but for some of you, I'm gonna just pull that text up so I can see it in this window. Um, one of the new features in here, this kerning, what does kerning mean? It's actually this spacing. If you've had a, a logo done by a, a designer, they might well have changed the, the text spacing. And that's what this is doing. Look, all of a sudden your, your logo 
uh, comes to life, or maybe you want to bring it in so there's uh, they overlap slightly. This is kerning. The other thing that is in here, if I were to click that, and let's just do shift and enter to add another line and uh, select this, is we've now got a line height. So if I feel that that spacing is, uh, I want it tighter, or I want to make it bigger, we can adjust it in here. Just double click, and it brings me back to zero. Now I only want one, and I seem to have lost the color of my, there. So let's leave that alone, and I don't want it on the, in fact, I'm gonna cancel this because I don't want it to change that over. But you see there, a couple of the other new features that have come in with the text. So you see, we're starting to build this up. We've got that um, object overlay in the background that's got a nice gradient on it. We've brought a camera overlay in. We've put a, a faint border around it. We've got a drop shadow. We've brought text in that we can adjust between the text and the line height. We can flick it on its side. We can put a shadow in. Um, these are awesome features. Now there is a new text box overlay. You'll know that there, you'll see that there are now two text overlays down here. Um, the one that we've just used there is called dynamic text. And what that means is, so if I click on this and I go back to edit my text, this says the text size is 16 points on there. Now, notice that I can actually adjust this. And then when I still click on the text, it's still telling me it's 16. So it's clearly not. And uh, although that isn't an issue in this scenario, if I were bringing in bullet points, maybe I want to bring on some text and um, we're going to call this bullet point one. And I think, right, I'm just going to put these at the top. Um, let's put that in place and then I'll do option, drag it down. And then number two and oh, that one's too big. So let me just take this down. Oh no. And now all of a sudden we're off and I, I can't accurately get the size of one to the other because whenever I change it, it dynamically changes the size of the text. There's a solution now to this. This is our text boxes and we don't have to delete this and go back in. We just choose the style from dynamic to text box shrink. What this is going to do, and we need to start with a lower size first of all, if I bring this down to say um, 13 and I click on this, what that's going to do, notice that, let's um, pull this one out of the way a minute. Bullet point one, now when I resize it, it doesn't change. It will if I try and make it too small, but as I get bigger and change this around, that text isn't changing like it would if I were in dynamic. Now, this has got a big text margin around it. I can see that. So I want to be able to bring that in. That just means that now I can line this up. And if I'm happy with, so I need to get the, I can't now stretch it to fit. So I need to know my sizes really, but I think 13, not quite enough. Um, let's go 14 and save it. It's now gonna increase it, but notice that it's keeping it at that height. So now if I were to duplicate this down, or actually, no, let's not do it that way around. I'm gonna pick this one up that I've already made that remember this one changed size. So what did we call that 14? I can change this to shrink to that. I need to get rid of that margin because it's trying to put padding around it. And if I change it over here to 14, I know that that's gonna be exactly the same size as the other one because I've chosen it as 14. Does that make sense? So this is really useful if you are struggling or you have struggled in the past to do something like this with bullet points and you find that your, your text was all over the place and you didn't actually know what size it was to be able to make another one. Now it will just stick to what you've got. And as I say, the only reason it would change in size is if you go too small because it, it can't get rid of the text. There is an option in here, I don't recommend it, to text box truncate. So actually, if we run out of space in here, it won't shrink the text, it'll just get rid of it. A bit like on an Excel spreadsheet, how you have that option. So I'm gonna keep it in shrink, and we'll just make sure that we uh, get the right size to start with, and I think that's a really good feature. Another great place 
to use this and this isn't actually an update but I want you to see it because I totally missed this until somebody pointed it out to me. You know when we bring overlay comments in and somebody's commented on a live and it comes in, normally, previously, you weren't able to brand up that comment overlay until someone had actually put a comment in. Well, now you can. When you come up to overlays, there is add placeholder comment overlay. And look what happens. This comes in. I'm actually giving away one of our other overlays because it's still in here. This is a placeholder overlay. And I'm just going to push that back. You can see how what we're doing here again. Look, with the comments, when I click on this, you can see that my background has got a gradient. I've taken those same colors, um, the, the, the navy and then a darker shade. And in here, I've done it, but I flipped it so it's darker at the top. I just think it, it it's keeping it going, but it's just mixing it up slightly. We've put the same border around it, the same spacing as what the... Uh, the one at the top here is, and I do just want to show you the text side of it, what I'm talking about with the text box, but notice that transition that uh, if we turn transition off, then when I turn this on and off, it'll just appear. You may have already seen that the transition you could have flying in from the right, and that's what I tend to use on my lives. But... Um, did you see that we just had there spinning from right or spinning from any other side? And there it comes and just adds a bit of fun there. The other thing that you're seeing on here is that, let me just change this over and demonstrate it to you. If I change this back to dynamic text, this is what we used to have. That if, um, you know, I'd set this box in place on here, uh, that used to be up there at that sort of size. And if this text changed, let's imagine that this comment came in and there, there wasn't a lot of text in the box. And I hit save. Uh, notice that my box has just shrunk down. When I change this over and we add some more text in there, imagine that the next comment comes in looking like this. Look what happens. It's now pushed up and it's gone over my branding. I don't want that to happen. And this little avatar image here uh, is just getting bigger and bigger. So that was dynamic text. And now you can change this style to be the same as what we just did with the bullet points. Text box shrink. And so it will do the same thing. There it's got to its right height. And then if it gets any smaller, it'll shrink it. Now that's a lot of text that's going on in there. That wouldn't be a typical comment that we'd pull on screen. So why don't we knock it out about there? It doesn't matter that it's halfway through a sentence. And we're on 13 size text. So I could actually set this and say, right, I don't want my box. I want my box to come halfway through there. Um, that looks nice. What will happen now is notice the placement of that. I'm going to add in more text again. And it hasn't changed the size of my box. It's still sitting exactly the same height. It's not coming near that branding. It's not covering my face up or anything. It shrunk the text because there's a lot in there. Let's go the other way around and say maybe there's only a few words. Maybe someone's just saying hello. It's it's put it to its original size and it hasn't tried to expand it. It's just left space around it. The other thing you can do here is this avatar. Notice it is a little scroll at the top and we can actually set the maximum height for this. So if we think we only want it to be half the size of that, then we can do now. I really, really like this. And um, the fact that there's this placeholder. So before I've gone live, I can have all this set up and ready. I don't want it to spin. I'm going to have it to fly in from the right. I'm good to go. One thing I should just point out with this is you might find by default, I've just turned it off, but you might find by default that you're playing around with these comments and they keep disappearing. You might have this turned on, which I think is a default that automatically hide the comments after 15 seconds. And I absolutely recommend that you use it. It just means that when you click that comment on, it comes and then you can carry on talking and it will just shoot off after 15 seconds. But when you're trying to edit it and design it, 
it's a bit of a pain when that thing shoots off. So um, why don't we just untick it while we're editing and then you can put it back on afterwards. So that's our placeholder sorted. And that's the, the second option then with text as text boxes. They're the biggest main features for me. There are uh, a few others. Uh, you might have spotted I've got a little green screen icon down there on my desktop. Uh, some of you will have been observant and seen that. Uh, this is one of the new updates is that image and movie overlays have got a green screen key option. And so you can go off to Canva or Google and find images, videos that have got a green screen on them and we can bring them in. But um, genuinely, this is where I've been using it as part of our intro. I have this little uh, cut out version of me that pops up and waves or points at one of the comments or something like that. And so that's what I just recorded over here. I just did this in Ecamm a few minutes ago. Let's just have a look at it. So that's just me sitting there on a green screen um, doing it properly. I would just give myself a little bit longer so there's time for it to slide in and out. But we're going to bring this in and you can see we haven't cut out the background yet. So I'm going to drag this over to showing current scene, add it as an animated overlay. There's no sound that I need in this. And uh, hopefully you know this that if you do option on the edges, you can drag it in and crop it. So I want to get out everything that isn't green. And again, exactly the same place down here, same options. I can choose blend mode, green screen. And look at that instantly. It just takes out the background and shows me green there. Uh, green, not green. Look, my hand's green. <laughs> I needed to increase the frame rate on this, but uh, don't worry. It's okay for this demo. Notice that I've got green screen and I can adjust the fade level. If you were used to using green screen before for your main camera background, it's the same idea that you can adjust how sensitive that green screen is. Just sort of check around your hair and your clothes and make sure it's about right. Um, and I can just pop that down here then at the bottom of the screen. This is what I've been doing. And then I say transi uh, transition is fly in from left. So, you know, as my countdown's going, um, I can just do this little thing and a little mini me pops in from the side. So you can do this, as I say, if you go off and have a look, you'll find all kinds of um, little gifts and things that have got green screen people that can come on and do stuff. So instead of needing to go off to software and take the green out and then bring it in, you can now do it in here. We're getting near the end. Uh, just want to show you another text feature on here. If I come back to this first one, where did we put the, we had a rectangle that came. No, we're going to go all the way with this. Let's bring it right over the front of me with this one. No, let's come back to this scene over here. And I want to just bring in dynamic text again. And we'll just stick with the word text on there. Again, I'm, I'm not editing it until I've brought it in. I'd rather just get it on the screen and uh, then we can adjust it with the options from here. What I want to do is put a colored background in this. You can see here what I was referring to earlier, this text margin, that it actually creates this spacing around it. And I like that this is changing dynamically in kind of real time as well, that as I adjust it over here, I can see what it's doing. It's just putting a, a padding around the text, but I want to push that up because I then want to bring this text here into the center and this option, notice it says there under more options, cut out text. And how cool is that? That it will actually put this text into the middle. I can keep increasing the size of that. Um, some of you are going to really like that and play with this from a branding point of view you could do something there I tell you what I've just thought of actually we could have put our uh, rectangle behind this so remember we had this rectangle behind I'm just going to bring that up in front of the text so that I can edit it let's make this a little bit more obvious by changing the color of it so that's the color of this there we go it doesn't have to be the full size of the window does it if I put that there and then I change the order around so that this is going to go behind the text 
Um, that's quite nice. Maybe that's a way of doing your um, countdown. I'm thinking it myself, actually. The whole starting in. I'm going to do it. Uh, <laughs> what I might do is put it like that and center it. Oh, it didn't like that, did it? There we go. Starting in. It's because I've taken up more space on it. Um, so we could do this. And it just means that that rectangle underneath needs to obviously co cover around the text. Yeah. Okay. So three layers there. We've got the text cut out on the front. We've got a color wash there. And then we've got the main camera in the background. Or you could, as you, as you saw, just have it as text. Um, some of you are going to go, no, I've got no use for that. I'd never use that. Others are going, this is amazing. I got so many ideas for it. So some really cool features here. And I think for a lot of us, it's it takes away that need to go off and buy frames and get things that are pre-done. You're only limited here by your own creativity. There is so much that you could do. And um, you've only got to go and have a look at Honor and Fulgens over on the Building Blocks uh, videos, and you'll see how they're really playing with all these features and doing amazing things with backgrounds and transitions and stuff going uh, on behind there. But uh, all being used now thanks to these overlays. The only other bits really to add to this is to say that there is now a menu option to be able to paste the style that you've put on an overlay onto another one. And you can do exactly the same thing with text overlays that you can copy that text style. So if you've done it into one and you go, I really like this, copy it, paste it onto some more text and it will copy all that across for you. And also it will just show you up here in the profiles. Uh, there's a new section up here that says recent profiles. So if like me, you use a lot of profiles and I do recommend you do, you know, if you've done a lot of style and you've branded things up in here and you've got all this color and stuff going, well, for me, I've got my ELA Live, which is for my Ecamm Live Academy. I also do a YouTube Academy. So I'm going to want to rebrand this with my YTA Live and that would be like a, a pink red color. So what I've got to do is duplicate this profile, call it YTA Live, change my colors, uh, change my comment overlay so that when they come in as comments, it's not going to suddenly be in the orange and I panic and go, ah, I'm in the wrong profile. Uh, it makes it very easy for me to work through in profile. So I do recommend you get your head around profiles as well. Now, a few pro tips right at the end here. Do remember to lock these scenes when you've built them. This one at the minute isn't locked and look what happens. I could be working away in here and all of a sudden, oh, what did I do? I, I just accidentally touched my mouse and the size has gone uh, or, or it could happen with the text. If I locked it down or if, I, if you need to be able to move things around on here, then at least lock the overlay down. So I can right click and I can say lock overlay and now I can't, you know, I'm moving around on here, but I can't knock that. I would also say to you, don't go over the top with these overlays. While it's quite fun to have a play with this and do all these spinny things and uh, you know lots of bright, bold colors, uh, great to have a play with. Do this into the Ecamm community group, um, but just be sensitive. Is this relevant to your audience? You know, If you're working in a corporate space, is it relevant? Do they want these comments spinning in from the side and all this chasing color going on around the edge of it? It might be really distracting to people. So I think there's a, a place for it. And I think you can add, you know, absolutely jazz things up a bit to instead of you showing up like this on your Zoom meeting, maybe you show up with something like this and it just feels nice. And you're going to get some nice comments and people saying, how do you do that? Go easy with it. And really the last tip that I would say to you is use a stream deck. Once you've created these scenes and I've got these named and they're in order over there, I want to just be able to quickly jump through. So, you know, this was the original from uh, my ELA Live. And then I go, right, let's go over and answer some questions now. I just touch a button and we've moved across here. Or I'm saying, let's just come to the comments and have a look. And I, I don't have to go looking up here and clicking and finding my way through. It just all adds to this slick presentation that we're doing. You've gone to the trouble of creating some nice scenes. You've branded it up well. Get yourself a Stream Deck. The 15 key one is probably the, the most practical size, just so you can easily jump between these different scenes that you've made. 
So there we go, that's version 4.1. There are a few smaller options at the end of that as well, but um, I think they're the main ones. I would really encourage you to go away and have a play with this. Um, why don't you try and build some things out yourself and uh, let me know in the comments what's the, your favorite feature, what is it you're looking forward to, or what have you been playing with already and you've uh, just found to be a game changer. Um, I hope that's been useful to you and I look forward to seeing you in another video. See ya.